all, apologies for being late as uh, myself and our chairman was in clinic and we were busy with the patients. Uh, to give you a brief information about predictive homeopathy as an organization, uh, this is an international school which has been established by Chairman Dr. Praful Vijaykar uh, in the year 2000. The main uh, vision and the mission of this school is to um, empower homeopaths and enrich homeopath with right medical knowledge and homeopathic knowledge because what was happening, the scenario was that students and doctors who were graduating out of homeopathic colleges, they had no confidence in practicing their own science. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, homeopathy, the degree which we have is Bachelor of Homeopathic Medicine and Surgery. So after doing a four and a half, five years of uh, schooling, medical schooling and coming into practice, they had all the theory knowledge but the practical knowledge was a miss. And this is exactly where 40 years back journey of our chairman Dr. Prafil Vijaykar started that he uh, bridged actually homeopathic principles and the modern medicine. Coming from a background of uh, doctors because his father was also an allopathic doctor, very well recognized in Andheri. His grandfather who graduated from London uh, from a very reputed university, he, he was also a surgeon. So having a lineage in the family, he had the quest for knowledge and when he actually went into his practice, he saw that all the, uh, the existing science or the modern medicine had its own limitation. So as and when he ventured more out into practice after finishing his homeopathic schooling, he came to a conclusion that homeopathy uh, and if you use homeopathy on uh, by, by bridging the principles of modern medicine can give you actual great results and when I say great results which means that they can reverse the process in a disease because what was happening was I mean we are not here to demean any science every science has to offer us something but what is more important is that there was no confident or a permanent answer which was which people were getting for their chronic diseases and here exactly where he uh, studied the philosophy of, of homeopathy and bridged the modern uh, philosophy or modern medicine he, he could come to a conclusion <coughs> that disease is not only starting with simple cases like cold and cough and asthma allergies respiratory problems but when they graduate into major hormonal problems endocrine problems pediatric problems cardiac problems renal problems those cases also can be reversed. He went further to do his research and he found out that it's not only these diseases but also in cases of malignant conditions, cancers, tumors, homeopathy can be used very very effectively. He further researched and he uh, went ahead by practicing I mean, more than 40 years now and he found out that not only in such cases but also it could help genetic mutational cases. So when we say genetic mutational cases, you know, these are the cases which do not have permanent solution or permanent answer. So here we do not say that we are changing the genetic mutation. Genetic changes mean it's an expression of a disease. Genet genetic expression is happening because of a certain protein coming out uh, inside your body and ex getting expressed in form of disease. So he could see homeopathic medicines uh, effectively working on this at this level and hence diseases such as uh, Down syndrome, diseases such as mental retardation, physical retardation, uh, you know cases of blindness, cases of, of who are deaf, dumb, what we call as differently able children, homeopathy was able to find an answer where they were, where, where the other conventional system was finding uh, no, no good answers. And this is exactly what he did was, he actually started preaching his experience, his 40 years of experience to students reaching out to colleges, reaching out to doctors saying that here is what we have an answer. 
where we can find a solution, we can reverse the process because what was happening with such cases was these are the cases which cannot be treatable, cannot be cured, they only can be rehabilitated. So his vision was to make sure that if we can uh, uh, you know, practice homeopathy in the right uh, way, then we can definitely have solutions and not only solutions, but try to make these cases more independent. And this is where the school of predictive homeopathy is unique in its work than other school of homeopathy. And this is exactly why all the European doctors who have been practicing in Europe for almost more than 15 to 20 years, all the senior doctors have come here in India to learn. This is not just one day affair, it has been over a build up. Uh, our chairman has been traveling to Germany for more than last 20 years and he's been training these doctors every year. We have schools there, who, uh, we have doctors who are leaders who are training and propagating this system there so that people can get confident and try to practice the right and the real homeopathy. And this is why all European doctors who close their clinic for 15 days, can you imagine it's not very easy to do. 15 days it, it cost them money it cost them you know because your earning is stopped but it is all to come here in the quest of knowledge to take the utmost knowledge or utmost experience from the master himself and go back and produce the same results and preach the same beautiful science mind you homeopathy is a german science coming from germany so we call that the the Germany is born, uh, homeopathy is born in Germany, the, but heart is beating in India. <laughs> yeah. So this is how the program is, why they have come here to learn. This is a workshop which we have, which we are having this for more than now uh, 10 years. Come, they come all the way from Europe. We have all doctors from Germany, Switzerland, Netherlands, England traveling all the way to India and these are workshops which are conducted in our center. This is the International Center for Homeopathic Medicine which is recognized by the ECPD. ECPD is the European Center for Peace and Development which is a, a, a university of, which is an university of peace and it is an arm of United Nations as well. So, um, Predictive Homeopathy as an organization has taken up a mission of spreading this right science established by Dr. Praful Vijaykar 40 years back and we want to manufacture good homeopaths, quality homeopaths who can give quality results and who can give scientific results so that we can help the ailing humanity, we can help homeopaths and we can help homeopathy. So I think this is just a short and a brief introduction about what we are doing and I would ask Dr. Vijaykar, our chairman, to say a few words. All that I would like to say is that when I became a homeopath, we were utterly discouraged by so many people that homeopathy has nothing to offer. Don't worry, just join allopathy. I joined my father and started practicing allopathy. But when I saw that there were limitations galore in that particular method, because though as he mentioned that my grandfather was educated in Scotland, my father here as an MBBS doctor, what I saw was that in 1901 my, father, my grandfather went to England to learn allopathy, medicine. And his books of medicine show that certain diseases like asthma, allergy, common diseases like blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and uh, liver side, the autoimmune disease like SLE or rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis or any chronic heart problems was never ever cured and it was, it was mentioned in the books, medicine books that these are only controllable but never curable. 
Surprisingly, my father, who did medicine in 1945, he studied medicine in 1945 in Bombay itself, from Tokyo National Medical College. Then his books also are books of medicine, the same one, the Harrison Book of Medicine, which is quite famous, mentioned most of the disease, same diseases like the asthma, the allergies, the hypertension, the diabetes, this, the same very chronic arthritis and all autoimmune diseases which uh, had no answer, other, only answer was steroids, the only answer is also steroids. All these were mentioned, liverside cancers and tumors and insanities and schizophrenia, which were uh, taken as the gone cases, but all these cases were still incurable and only controllable. After almost uh, 35 years, in 70s, from 70 to 75, I studied medicine. And again, my books also are mentioning the same list of all the diseases which I mentioned again as incurable and only controllable. Okay, we were very happy that science is advancing, the books were getting thicker and thicker. And gradually our medicine book became double in volume. Even today, the medicine book of medicine comes in two volumes, not one volume. And when my son started understanding or started reading medicine, learning medicine in the year 2001, 20, now 20,001, that is 2001. Now you can understand that in 1901 my father, grandfather had gone to UK and his books of medicine had the same list which was incurable, only controllable. Whereas even after 100 years my son was reading books where it was mentioned that the same list of diseases, whether it is allergy, whether it is asthma, whether it is diabetes, <coughs> sorry, whether it is diabetes, whether it is a heart problem, whether it is schizophrenia, whether it is cancer, these are only controllable, but most of them not curable. And we say that science has advanced. Then what is the problem? Where is the science lacking? But and how come these medicine books have become doubled? The medicine books have been become doubled because of the increase in investigations. I was surprised to see that the number of investigations have increased. The diagnosis and the neuron of neuron diseases are became easy, but the treatment still eludes our science of therapeutics. This is what made me go into homeopathy. At least something can, will be found out there because our founder, Dr. Hanuman, had left uh, the MD degree of, in allopathy in, from Germany and he started on this particular science, homeopathic science, and that which was a very small science which was just the beginning and believe it or not many MD doctors started following this toddler science, the science which was still not established but they saw something in it. So why they saw something in it? It was because Hanuman said that see this why are we failing in getting results is because Though God has made us in two parts, mind and body, we are considering only the body. The body is merely a tool which mind uses, everybody knows it. But when somebody is ill, when, when somebody gets a uh, pneumonia or tuberculosis or cancer, we conveniently forget the mind which is the driving force. And when this is not treated, we are treating only half the person. The left half is not cured and that is why we get relapses and recurrences in the conventional mode of treatment. 
So we try to go ahead of this. We try to bridge the gap between allopathy and homeopathy, and I found wonderful results coming in what they call <coughs> as incurable diseases. And not only that, still further, we invaded even the genetic part of it because the genes are the ones which are actually uh, ruling us and they are the ones which are uh, giving us so many diseases and I thought that it is better that we understand the genetic code of a person, treat the patient as a whole so that we treat the man in disease and not disease in man as Hanuman has suggested at that time. And to our surprise, what we found is that we could give eyesight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the mute, and legs to the lame, and not only that, but even intelligence to the mental retarded. And that is how we started these camps, which have become so many, so many. Now we are having 51 free camps. And I, we kept it free because the people should come and take it and the, the money should not be an inhibitory factor. That every person, every poor person, where these children abound, you know, in the offices we have a lot of people like this who are, who are not even touched by the doctors. Why leave them like that? So we have seen to it that our camps are going more into the offices and town, uh, smaller towns and even backward areas. <coughs> and in fact, in Kerala, we have arranged even uh, mobile vans to go into the uh, deeper areas where our people, our my students whom I have trained, go and treat, and they are treating it free of charge. I again reiterate free of charge because we don't want this medicine or treatment to be a burden or already burdened uh, parents. Because when such a child is born, a mental child, retarded child is born, the handicapped child is born, we call it a differently able child is born. You know, the whole life is shattered and when such a child is ill in the house, it is not one person who suffers, but the whole family, the father, the mother, the grandmother, the grandmother, everybody suffers. And this is what we want them to come out of. And you know that when such a child is born, the mother and the father cannot live their life as long as that child lives and at the same time they cannot die leaving that child until that child does not die because who's going to take the responsibility so it is high time that we people we as homeopaths we as doctors also try to understand this this grossly neglected community the people who have un, who are unfortunate, who are unfortunate to have such cases or such children, and this is exactly what we have been doing for the last 15 years. And believe it or not, we are seeing more than 200,000 cases, such cases, all over India in one year. So one year. Similar, we have been doing this again and again and again everywhere and every month we are spreading our small these camps which we call as hope for the hopeless. So with this I conclude my speech. Thank you so much. Thank you. This to kafi rahe. Can I speak in Hindi or English? English okay. Okay. So we had we we did face a lot of challenges. Uh, you know, initially, uh, because what we are preaching actually is in the colleges, right? Going to the roots and teaching them what is the real homeopathy. And what was happening was the students who were there inside are actually getting, you know, the knowledge which is a real homeopathy. And then they started questioning their own teachers and professors 
विच वॉज गेटिंग अ इश्यू फॉर दैम एज दे वर इन द कॉलेज एंड वो पास होने के लिए प्रॉब्लम होता था उनको सो बिकॉज बिगेस्ट चैलेंज सो वी हैव टू ब्रेक द आइस because what was happening was the homeopathy which i am very sorry to say that but not all but many of the colleges are not doing the right homeopathy and this is exactly what we want to focus on that creating quality homeopaths creating more knowledgeable homeopaths who has you know knowledge about science as well as homeopathic philosophy and when we make sure that we are training them in that manner because for example i'll tell you why we name this institute as predictive homeopathy so that is the first question probably i should answer that is because every disease that's the that's the study and hypothesis which he proposed that every disease travels whether it is a normal cold cough asthma diabetes or hypertension so if a patient is coming to us and we give a prescribe a medicine his asthma goes away and he starts getting hypertension that is a wrong direction of the disease and we try to correlate this with on the basis of embryology that when when the fetus is actually taking birth how the fetus is taking birth from ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm and this is exactly how the disease will travel inside the human body and when we try to preach the students that we when you are prescribe you see that this the more important disease should go away and a lesser important and a least important disease should come back on your system and that is a truth that is a truth and when they get this knowledge they start going into the, the colleges and the opd and when they see random homeopathy been prescribed let me warn you that's not real homeopathy the combination the formula which you are getting that's not real homeopathy the real homeopathy is a constitution the medicine the single dose single remedy medicine where we do a complete analysis of that patient try to understand just say ek taale ki ek hi chabi hoti hai there is one medicine for that individual pertaining to that disease so once they start having this knowledge and they see something wrong happening in the colleges they start questioning the teachers which were offending them of course because they were the seniors and that was the greatest challenge of course we have overcome that because we have now gone to the roots and even the teachers have themselves changed understanding that this is the real homeopathy and hence that challenge is no more a challenge for us right. thank you thank you if you can share few things about uh, this homeopathy uh, how how uh, excellent response especially uh, in india the following is uh, great for homeopathy patients themselves are now coming ahead and they want because earlier what would happen was any chronic disease in the family they would first run to an hospital but now there is a mindset which all about thought process and mindset now they are sure they are aware how homeopathy functions and they are coming towards homeopathy that is one second is those patients who are already on chronic treatment and they are you know fed up of taking medicines after medicine they want an answer they want a permanent answer hence the the percentage of people coming to us are increased so the awareness has definitely gone up you know people demand from people has definitely gone up and it's not only in india even all across the group if you see uh, people coming forward for homeopathy as definitely without advertisement and yes yes one more fact is uh, uh, without really advertise we do not advertise about what we are doing and how the patient is getting cured it's just a word of mouth and our camps that we are getting referrals of these patients so just to brief you that we have uh, this camps as sir addressed at 51 free camps across all over from north to south east to west and then we have 25 predictive homeopathy clinics all over india which are also doing great because we are trying to reach to not only uh, cities tier 1 and tier 2 and tier 3 but we have gone even to taluka level you know sub place tehsil uh, level sorry tehsil level where, uh, which is called as tumsar if you have heard which is close to nagpur there also we have a predictive center whereby we can reach to people and help them also 600 people yeah and camps also we are having this uh, camp since last more than 15 years and one camp is having more than 2600 young uh, patients. patients so small children is the focus is only pediatrics only uh, developmental disorders neuro developmental disorders and cases which are uh, differently able or challenged cases we say and what will be your action on coronavirus which is see basically what they have given in the 
news and all that you take this medicine is principally not proper in homeopathy. Because homeopathy does not treat the disease in man, we treat the man in disease. And if a person is healthy, he is not going to get this coronavirus even if he goes and breathes into a Chinese person's mouth. <laughs> this is what we believe that we believe that this patient's immunity is more important. You know? And if every person has got his proper immune system, immune system perfectly balanced, all these things doesn't affect him. As such also, you know, in a country of 120 billion, as uh, this, uh, our Modi sir says, we have got only three reported cases. Is it an epidemic? It, I will not call it as an epidemic. And on the ground, yesterday's uh, some newspapers, the Times of India has carried the headlines that probably is a hype created by certain business people. So of course, we, not, we don't talk about it, but it's not something to be afraid about. Definitely not. And if at all if a person suffers from it, go to the RS Omicath and get cured in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it is not very difficult to cure a virus. Virus. You know, like all the viruses when they enter, they create a war. Whether it was H1N1 or it was in 1957, flu virus. First time influenza virus came in 1957. You know? So much so that we, uh, so much uh, hype was created that there were songs also made uh, on that that what you should do and what you should not do. And I see people uh, writing down some things of how to avoid it, how not to avoid it. But virus now, otherwise influenza virus come and go, and nobody knows also. <coughs> but uh, by mistake. Not only of the physician or somewhat of the weaker constitution, if somebody dies, it makes history. It makes a story. But it is not something like a big, huge epidemic which is attacking us. No, sir, I will not agree to that. Excuse me, sir. We have a lecture attend and we have to go there So we have not really ventured into that age group because our hands are full here only. <coughs> you need more manpower as our army of homeopaths who are calling us increase. We, tell, we have definitely want to enter into that field and then those are also people who are really hopeless. Yes. You know? And I am sure in near future we are going to start and I am thankful for you to give us suggestions so that we take it on a walk footing. Yes. Yeah. That has also to be done. Yeah. Yeah. But as I told you that our hands are full because we have to, uh, you know, like camps in say Mumbai, we have got in Chatara, Mahabaleshwar, we have got in Bid, we have got in uh, Nagpur, Nashi, we have got in Nagpura and uh, Amravati and so on and so forth. So, in Maharashtra itself, 
we have spread so much, you know. So every time there is a camp, we, one of us has to go, two of us at least have to go with the team of other younger Hoga guys. But then we have got in Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh we have got 10 places like Walia, Ratla, Indore, you know, Sudanpur. So all 10, 10 places we have to go. So just imagine, same thing in Uttar Pradesh. This is Madhya Pradesh I am talking about. Uttar Pradesh we have got in uh, even BHU. Banana Sindhu University has given us a place to uh, practice this. Uh, all over Uttar Pradesh we have got another seven to eight camps. Right up to Kerala and uh, in the Nam Firozpur in the Punjab. So we are having our hands full. And uh, I appreciate your uh, concern for the old people, even we have it. But I think we are, we are beginning from the younger generation and maybe we will reach to the older generation very soon. Yes. Well, why not? Yes, yes. yes. Why not? Yes. yes, especially those who are, you know, like uh, absolutely dependent. At least we can make them independent. We can't make them younger. We can't make them, you know, cured of their diseases which they have been suffering for like 40, 50 years. But we can make them agile, we can make them self-dependent so that they can live their life on their own. And one more thing I would like to add is we uh, have a camp on 12th of March in Mumbai. So I would request, somebody request all the representatives to come and have an actual vision look at the camp and even interview the patient because the patients who have improved are getting more and more patients. So you'll get a uh, actually. Yeah, we don't advertise. They come uh, because by word of mouth. Yes, any more? Yeah, hope for the hopeless. Some camp कर रहे हैं वो मार्टुंगा में है. Twelfth March को यहाँ पे सारे जो बच्चे हैं जो मध्यमंद है, गतिमंद है. जो जो दिख नहीं सकते, जो चल नहीं सकते, जन्म से बोल नहीं सकते, और जो न्यूरो डेवलपमेंटल प्रॉब्लम्स कहलाते हैं, उनका इलाज हम करते हैं फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट है, कोई पैसा नहीं लगता है, लेकिन सुबह ही आना पड़ता है उनको क्योंकि लगभग 2000 की मात्रा में बच्चे आते हैं, और तो हमारी पूरी हमारी सर के जो लग जाती है इस कैंप कैंप के लिए तो सुबह 8 बजे से लेके रात को 9 बजे तक कैंप शुरू रहता है सर कैंसर के कितने मतलब केसेस सॉल्व किया अभी तक नहीं कैंसर एक अलग कैंसर की बात करें क्या कैंसर एक अलग डिपार्टमेंट हो गया तो और एक थर्ड भी हो गया वहाँ पे अभी तक हमको 100 परसेंट रिजल्ट्स नहीं है इसलिए हम अभी भी उसका फ्री कैंप नहीं कर रहे मेरे मन में है कि कैंसर के लिए भी फ्री इलाज चालू कर दें लेकिन पहले हमारे फाउंडेशन क्लियर हो रहे थे क्लियर कर कि ना सिर्फ मुझे लेकिन हर एक पेच हर एक डॉक्टर को रिजल्ट आना चाहिए तो ऐसे नहीं हो कि मैं कल बोल दूँ कि मैं हम कैंसर ठीक करते हैं, ब्रेन ट्यूमर ठीक करते हैं, आप ऐलान कर देंगे और कहीं पे भी कोई भी छोटे से गांव में अगर किसी को ब्रेन ट्यूमर हो तो बोलेंगे वो मैं पैक के पास जाओ, लेकिन वो ही विल नॉट बी एक्विप, यू नो तो ये किसका ये है, नुकसान किसका ह� so I cannot make a false in a law, I can cure this and cure that. Until I will give them a clear cut Marga Darshan, a Jisha Bata Dunga Me, Ki Bhai, Ye Aise Aise Karo, Toh Aapko Maximum Results Aar Sakte Hai. So Ye Kiya Bhagat, At least my conscience does not permit. Aaj Me Inzo Paat So Pada Tau, ऐसी चीज पढ़ाता हूँ जहाँ पे मुझे रिजल्ट आए इम्पॉसिबल थिंग्स आई हैव सीन हैपनिंग और जेनेटिक म्यूटेशन जैसे कि इसी में ठीक हो रहे हैं तो ये मैं इनको छाती ठोक के बोल सकता हूँ क्योंकि मैंने देखा है आपको भी ये नजर आ जाएगा लेकिन आई कैन नॉट मेक अ फॉर्स जैसे कि मैं कैंसर अभी ठीक कर सकता हूँ हाँ मैं भी एक साल के बाद में जब मेरे को एक्सेप्ट के मिल जाएगा पिक्चर हम लोग कर सकते हैं